Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for y'all. So, uh, we're going to be covering a branded Tri Brigade. As I uh, have mentioned a lot in the past, I like to sneak Tri Brigade in at least once per season. Uh, love coming back to this deck. Uh, it's still probably just my favorite deck in all of uh, Yu Gi Oh! right now. And all of, like, I guess, quote unquote, modern Yu Gi Oh! among, like, recent competitive decks, that is. Uh, Tri Brigade is definitely my favorite <laughs> of my Master Duel decks is what I, I keep wanting to say as if Master Duel is its own game, but I do very much consider it its own format. So, um, yeah, I can say that of all the Master Duel format decks, uh, Tri Brigade, love it. Uh, so the branded variant is still my variant of choice. I've seen people ask if other variants like uh, Zodiac Tri Brigade are still viable, and the answer is definitely yes. Uh, Tri Brigade Zodiac is still uh, definitely a good deck. I'd call it like branded Tri Brigade, probably an upper road deck. Um, at least in terms of like uh, representation and power, it's probably not quite tier 3 in terms of power. Again, nor do I think Brandon Tri Brigade is probably not quite tier 3 in terms of power level. It's close, it's definitely close. It's, uh, um, I think, just lacking a little bit of a punch uh, that some of the other more meta decks, I guess, are able to provide. But um, obviously, this deck definitely still has its merits with uh, the one card combo of Rescue Cap being able to put out. Uh, the Mirror Jade plus the Revolt, um, and then you can even throw in the Ancient Warriors Oath, uh, Double Dragon Lords, if there's like no interruptions at all, uh, you end up getting that as well. So, uh, just that one card combo is very nice. You can of course do that with, um, you know, like Fractal and I think like Kit, or just another tri Brigade monster as well, but uh, suffice it to say, uh, this deck does still have quite a bit of staying power, um, but the other decks are just a little bit more consistent, as well as being a little bit more powerful right now. I don't think the build, I was talking about this in the uh, video we did at the beginning of the month, I think the major change I did to the build was including the droplets, I don't think these were in before. I'm pretty sure I did just have three Imperm, two Valor, uh, in order to counter, um, you know, Branded Despia more efficiently, but Droplet is a very, very good card, this format, uh, not just because of, like, the whole Ido lock, although we'll, we do actually have a game coming up where we're able to get around an Ido lock thanks to Droplet. Um, but even aside from that, this is just generally a pretty good format for it. Uh, Droplet, if you're going second, is excellent about uh, breaking just about uh, every common board you see this format. Um, like, it can stop a Mirror Jade. You do have to be careful about when you use it against Spray and Despia. I would normally try to wait for uh, them to get Guardian Chimera plus Mirror Jade on the board, and then you can just negate both of those. You can use it against Sword Soul Tindy, against Baron plus, um, uh, what do you call it? The Chi Shao. You can use it against flows. Again, you gotta time it pretty well, but uh, it can be useful there. It's just useful against breaking, like I said, a lot of uh, end boards that are pretty common in this format. So, Droplet in general, I think, is a very good card. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Any deck that can afford to be playing Droplet should be playing about as many copies as it can afford to play. Ideally, a set, if possible, but uh, I like at least two. So, yeah, I decided to include a couple of those here in the build. Otherwise, it's mostly the same. The extra deck I did think about changing up just a little bit. I thought about including a second Bear Brum, actually, which might seem a little bit weird in addition to also two Fairy Jeep, but this deck does tend to have grindy games sometimes, and there's actually been, even in the like relatively brief time I've been playing this deck in the last couple of months, there's still been quite a few scenarios where I'm in a grindy game and a second Bear Brum is like not necessarily required, but would make finishing out the game a lot easier, like a lot more smooth. As far as what I would take out for that, it's really tough. Race Vulgar is kind of an option. It's pretty rare I go into this, but it's still nice to have a throw a, a quote-unquote throwaway Link 3 that you can go into with a Tri Brigade monster and then pivot into uh, an access code talker. You always, of course, have Rugal as well, but Rugal is actually not that bad as far as like just making off a revolt. Sometimes you don't have the room to make a Shurig, so you make a uh, Rugal instead. But that actually ends up being fine because then you can even use Rugal later in the turn to get back, like, a Nerval or something. And then, like, you know, either way, either it gets destroyed and you get a Surge or it gets bounced back to your hand and you have another Tri Brigade monster to follow up with on the next turn. So, uh, there is still that. I would I would like to keep the Race Fulgur. I've thought about dropping Albion as well. Albion's kind of here in theory to be used, like, to potentially get a lot of damage on board. You can, like... The idea is if you hard draw the Branded Fusion, you could potentially send, like, I don't know, you could send, like, Nibiru, right, and Albas to the graveyard, make Albion, um, and then you could banish them both to make Brigand as well. That would be the requirements there uh, for both of those cards. 
which is like, eh, you know, like it's got its uses, I guess. You could also use it with like a Cypher monster or something. Uh, if you already had like, like the Albion Shrouded Dragon or even like Nibiru in the graveyard, you could do it that way as well. Or, you know, potentially make the uh, Mirror Jade too. So there is that. It gives you an option if you hard draw the Brand Infusion. But honestly, most hands you hard draw the Brand Infusion, you can still make Link plays anyway. And that's the thing that makes drawing this card kind of awkward in this deck is that, like, you don't want to be locked into fusions. It's like, like the point of using it with Vert. That's the point of the whole combo is that you can still do all your Link summons that you need to do. Um, but you're not locked into, like I said, those fusion summons. So, hmm. I don't know, it's just something I've been thinking about with the extra deck. Definitely let me know if you have any opinions about that in the comments below. I'm, as always, is ever interested to hear what you all think. But enough about that. Let's just go ahead and jump into the list, and then we'll take a look at some games. So we're playing one Cyframe Driver, one Effect Veiler, three Tri-Brigade Nerval, three Max C, two Cyframe Gear Gamma, two Tri-Brigade Keras, three Tri-Brigade Kit, three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, two Rescue Cat, one Fallen of Albaz, two Tri-Brigade Fractal, one Tri-Brigade Mercurier, one Albion the Shrouded Dragon, one Nibiru the Primal Being, one Harpy's Feather Duster, one Foolish Burial, one Brand Diffusion, two Fire Formation Tenki, two Called by the Grave, one Cross Out Designator, two Forbidden Droplet, two Infinite Impermanence, one Tri-Brigade Revolt, and then one Branded Sword. Now down here in the extra deck we've got one Brigand of the Glory Dragon, one Albion the Branded Dragon, one Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon, one Salman Great Almirage, one Predaplant Vert Anaconda, one Ancient Warriors Oath Double Dragon Lord, two Tri Brigade Ferrigy the Baron Blossom, one Tri Brigade Bear Brum, the Rampant Rampager, one Race Vulgar the Desperate Doom Eagle, one Tri Brigade Rugal the Silver Sheller, one Appalusia Bow of the Goddess, one Access Code Talker, and then finally, of course, two Tri-Brigade Shurig, the Ominous Omen. So there is the list. Now let's take a look at those games. So the first game here is going to be against Brand Despia, playing a lot of the new cards, including the uh, combo that I showed off, uh, the Ido Lock, as I'm referring to it, where you use Braided Exclusion to put Ido, the Supreme Magical Being, on your opponent's side of the board. So uh, they're going to take the first turn, and I already alluded to this actually in the deck profile, but this is in fact going to be the game where uh, my opponent is going to put an Ido on the board. But fortunately, as you can see, we managed to open with our Forbidden Droplet, so it's not going to be an issue at all. It's actually going to be really nice because the opponent's going to get their Alibur back, and we're going to not only be able to get rid of the Ido with Droplet, but then also stop their Alibur search on the next turn. And also, as you can see, the opponent's like throwing a lot of resources into doing this. Resources that are not going to get recycled because they're not going to be able to get the Guardian Chimera draws nor follow up with a uh, quote-unquote refreshed Mirror Jade that can use its effect again uh, during my turn. So this is why I said during the deck profile uh, where I updated included Expulsion and Ido where I'm like, I don't know if this is really worth going into over the standard turn one combo. Um, it's got a better payoff. Obviously, if it goes through, your opponent just not being able to summon monsters is gonna generally end the game for like pretty much every deck. But you know, it is also risky in scenarios like this where uh, you know I have a response, and now not only do you not have you know not only did I obviously clear the idol off the board, I'm able to play it normally only using one card. I denied a search in the process, and now my opponent is lower on resources than they would be. Because, again, they don't have the Guardian Chimera Jaws. They don't have the um, the Mirror Jade on the board either. Like, they can get this ad libitum if they want, but it doesn't matter. The only thing that would really... Well, no, they don't have any cards in hand. So I was going to say, even if it was Super Poly, it wouldn't matter. Uh, they do have a Brandon in red here, but I've got a call by for that. So that's definitely not going to be an issue at all. Uh, they do have a Fairy Tale Snow. And, you know, normally this would be pretty rough. I didn't happen to also have Keras plus a, a material for it. So I did actually open pretty well against this uh, this uh, opponent here, but um, you know, I did also want to show, I guess, not only uh, this game we're able to overcome the Ido lock, but this also then demonstrates how that can be a bit of a weakness of Brand Despia if you lean too much into that as well. Uh, since we banished a Mercurier, by the way, we get the Albion, which means we get the uh, Branded Sword uh, we get to send that, get an extra draw, and then use the Brandon Sword to put the Mercurier back in hand. So 
we're actually going to be able to use the bare rooms effect and uh, you know, even though this kit got put face down, uh, that's still going to be more than enough resources to find lethal as my opponent realizes and then concedes. So, um, yeah, again, I, I thought that was, that was actually the first game I played in this session with this deck, which felt very good. It felt very good to uh, um, overcome an idle lock right out the gate. So, very nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next duel. This time we're up against Numerons, which I feel like, I don't know, I... There obviously are a lot of people out there playing Numerons at pretty much any point during the ladder, but for whatever reason, it doesn't feel like, or it feels like it doesn't matter whether it's like the beginning or the end of the season. I, I always run into like, what feels like my more more than my fair share of Numerons, but I digress. I'm gonna start with the Rescue Cat here. I'll fire that off. The opponent does have an Ash Blossom, but I have the Cross that as a Nader, so uh, it's, they're not gonna be able to have a response for that. They might still have a max C, of course, or another kind of disruption, but, um, you know, for the time being, at least, we're good. I do normally like to bait out the Ash Blossom, if at all possible, before uh, committing to summoning the Rescue Cat. Like, if I've got a Fractal and Rescue Cat, I'll definitely pitch Fractal um, before normal summoning the Cat, because most people will, and rightfully so, Ash Blossom the Fractal. I do still think that is correct if your opponent activates it, but um, it just happens to make a very good check for the uh, Rescue Cat, like I mentioned there, so... Uh, here I'm summoning the Fractal. I'm just basically here just showing off the uh, kind of standard combo line uh, that you like to do on turn one uh, with the Rescue Cat, the one card combo that I mentioned. So we're going to be able to end with, like I mentioned in the deck profile, the Mirror Jade, a Tri Brigade Revolt that can get a Shurig, um, and on top of that, the. Um, what is it called? The Ancient Warriors of Double Dragon Lord. That's the one. Yep. If you'd like a uh, like you know more detailed breakdown of how this combo plays out, definitely feel free to check out the description below. You're gonna find a combo guide for this specific variant of Tri Brigades. And if you go through my videos and if you go to my channel and just search like Tri Brigade combo guide, you'll find a whole bunch that I've posted, uh, various ones for like Tri Brigade Zodiac as well. Um, and I think if you take a look at my playlist uh, for specific decks, I, not, not I think, I know, Tri-Brigade does by far have the most videos, so um, definitely no shortage of, of Tri-Brigade content if you're interested in more on the channel. Uh, like I mentioned, this is definitely by far uh, my favorite archetype. And they do actually get more support moving forward, which is, which is cool. Um, they got a pretty good spell card from what I remembered, and then they get a Link 5 monster that's like, that's alright, I'll, I'll, I'll play around with it when it comes out, you know? the, like, the, the further up, quote-unquote upgraded form of Shurig, but really Link 4 Shurig is still, uh, hands down, like, the, the real tri Brigade boss monster. So the opponent does have a Lightning Storm, but I'll throw out the Revolt here. And even though I could make a Shurig, I'm actually gonna make a Rugal here. Uh, this is one of those scenarios, like I mentioned before, where uh, it actually is better to make Rugal, because the Shurig isn't really gonna end up doing anything. I don't... Well, I guess I do have a few things banished. If it got destroyed, I could search a level 3 or lower Tri-Type monster. Tri-Type being Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast. But um, still, you know, I decided to go for the Rugal because the Rugal can uh, bring back one of the monsters from my graveyard, potentially. So I can use that to defend my life points if needed. And then, you know, if I can bring back, like, for example, a Nerval. And then, like I said uh, earlier, it'll either die and I get the search, or I can just bounce it back to my hand. Now, funnily enough, my opponent went to all that trouble just to search Numeron Network, uh, only to end their turn, but uh, I think that was kind of their way of conceding, because uh, even if they had activated the Numeron Network and gotten their four gates, if they go to attack with the first one, I can just banish it with the Mirror Jade. Uh, when they go to attack with the second one and activate the effect, I can just use Mercurier to negate that effect. So they have two gates, two attacks left after that. Uh, with 1,000 attack each because they would have received no upgrades again due to the other monsters being banished and negated respectively. So, like, 1,000 attack could attack over... Um, oh, and I also have a bounce too on top of that, like I could bounce one of them away. So, uh, that's my long way of saying, like, there's no way they could ever play through this board with only the negates, or only the gates, not the negates, <laughs> only the Numeron gates, um, which is, you know, I think what they realized and why they didn't even, they didn't even bother activating the effect here, so... I'm just going to turn this Mirror Jade to attack mode and go for a access code talker for a quick win. And then, and then they concede. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I, I guess it doesn't really matter when they concede as long as they do, right? So 
there is that nice win against Numeroz there. Let's take a look at the next duel. So this one here is against Virtual World, which it's been a little bit, it's been a minute since I've played against this deck. I actually, this was, I knew I was forgetting a deck when I, when I was uh, considering decks to build. I should have thought more about building Virtual World and trying it out again. I think I still need to craft a Beatrice, though, and that's one of the main reasons I haven't done that yet, if I recall correctly. Uh, in any case, the opponent's going to start with the Virtual World Gate um, King Log here before going for a uh, Gigi. Now, I'm, I really actually debated for a couple, not a couple of minutes, it wasn't quite that long, maybe a minute or so of uh, whether I wanted to activate Ash Blossom. It was kind of a hard decision because, I don't know, there's a, a good chance that this GG was just uh, uh, an Ash Bait, uh, trying to get me to use the Disruption before they revealed, like, uh, the the Hime, my Hime, right? Jeez, oh, it's been so long since I've played with or against this deck that I'm trying to remember all their names, but uh, the good one, you know, the one I'm talking about. Um, but I ultimately decided to let this resolve here. Uh, it was a little bit risky too, but I thought, you know, uh, if they end up sending another copy of uh, this spell card, I can just Ash Blossom that. Um, they did end up sending the uh, virtual team a Nyan Nyan here. Um, before, or rather, uh, after, especially summoning the Water Enchantress, I'm not, I'm not super sure that I understand this play, or do they just normal summon it? They would've had to have normal summon it, right? Um, yeah, they just normal summoned it. I'm not really sure I understand that play. I think uh, if they would have activated it to try to get the the right of our Messiah, well, then I would have definitely Ash Blossomed. I would have more or less had to, um, even though I really wouldn't have wanted to, because that would have led... I guess I could have actually let it come out and the Griffin come out and then just imperm the Griffin, which would have actually been the right call now that I think about it, because Virtual World doesn't have too many imperm targets, which is why you're going to actually see here I end up using the imperm against... Uh, start as Charge Warrior, which is normally not the type of, of effect I would be looking to negate, but Virtual World, like, all of their effects happen in hand or in graveyard. Like, pretty much every single one of them. So, it doesn't really do me any good to hold on to Imperm here. So, in that scenario, I think, yeah, I would just let them get the Wandering Griffin Rider out, and then Ash Blossomed later, and then when they tried to negate with the Griffin Rider, or maybe even before, uh, just Imperm to negate it and make sure they can't do that. So... Um, I guess it's kind of my roundabout way of saying, like, I'm not really sure why my opponent normal summoned the Water Enchantress here. They could have used it as further Ash Blossom bait, um, but they didn't, so that's totally fine with me. <laughs> I am definitely okay with that. They were probably planning on synchroing or seizing with it or something, or linking. I will dissect it as a link. They are probably planning on synchroing with it. Oh, you know what? Actually, duh, that does make sense with this, uh, um, this Lao Lao here. Yeah, they were probably planning on making a level 9 synchro with it. Which I will say, I will say this much, given how long I had previously considered ashing the Gigi, they really should have considered that I had one. Um, you know, that's actually definitely something to think about, is like, how long your opponent holds the response trigger um, before passing it back to you. Uh, you shouldn't take that as an indication that they don't have anything. I would assume the opposite in pretty much every scenario, that they have a response that they were really thinking about using, but decided not to. That kind of information is really critical. Not just the fact that they have the response, but your opponent's mentality and thinking about when they're going to use it is actually something you you should be thinking about as well. Like, you know, and that can make it easier or maybe even more difficult in some scenarios to bait out a response or or try to get them to, to bait out a response. Uh, sometimes you can kind of like make your plays seem more scary than they actually are uh, and then get a response out that way before making your actual play. So, um, yeah, after that, I don't even remember, what did I do to... Oh yeah, I just discarded Fractal, and then and then my opponent conceded. Uh, to be fair, though, uh, the opponent wasn't really left with many options at that point. Uh, since I decided to save the Ash Blossom, I was able to negate the Lao Lao later in the turn, which um, I think, again, kind of surprised my opponent, just kind of the way they were playing. They might, I think they might have assumed I didn't have one, because I didn't use it on the GG earlier. And then as far as like negating the uh, Starter's Charge Warrior draw, again, like I said... This deck that I'm playing against doesn't have very many uh, good targets for Imperm, so I'm fine using Imperm to stop a single draw here, because that's going to further reduce the odds that my opponent has an extender later on in the turn. So uh, then they were just forced to end on a very mediocre board. I do think my opponent conceded a little bit early. Like, yeah, their board was pretty bad, but one Fractal discard alone, like, I wasn't going to win that turn. Uh, the rest of my hand wasn't, like, super great. I didn't have the means to OTK, so... Uh, the game could have played out a little bit longer, but 
Um, you know, again, like I said during the uh, at the end of the last duel, uh, it doesn't really matter when we get to concede as long as we get it right. So uh, let's go and take a look at the next game here. Our next duel here is going to be against Sword Soul, and this is actually a pure Sword Soul deck. I was looking over the list just now, and there are no Tenny cards in my opponent's deck. They're playing um, pretty much all the Sword Soul cards, including Iris and even the uh, the, the other level 6, the one that doesn't make a token. Um, there's actually one Sword Soul made deck monster that doesn't make a token. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, and, and go figure why it doesn't see you play, right? <laughs> uh, in any case, I'm just going to start with the Fractal here. Uh, pretty typical Fractal Mill, of just sending the Kit and the Nerval. I'll end on searching another Kit before uh, banishing my monsters. The opponent's got a Max C, um, but that's fine. I'm just going to summon the Bear Room and go for Rugal and then Revolt like I was going to do anyway. Like, yeah, I'll give my opponent a, uh, you know, plus one card advantage overall, but I think that's definitely worth it to get a Revolt online. Uh, but when I go to activate the Bear Room effect, my opponent then has an Ash Blossom, presumably one they just drew off of one of those last two uh, maxi draws. Otherwise, I would think that you would have used the uh, Ash Blossom against the Fractal. Although, I guess... Well, no, I was going to say, you could make an argument for waiting and holding it for the Bear Room, but you actually really don't, because I still fill my graveyard with... Uh, uh, banish fodder for the next turn at that rate, so um, I still think ashing the fractal is still definitely right. Opponent's got a an Ecclesia, I was gonna say a <laughs> an Ecclesia here. Um, yeah, so I'll maxi in response to that effect. Uh, they then get the Iris Sword Soul, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. I remember at this point, like you know, checking the notes, and I was like, wait, am I playing against eight Axis Blind Second? Did they just add a Moye? And I was like, yeah, they emerge just for Moye, so. I didn't realize at the time, well I guess I realized at this point that I was playing against a, a truly pure Sword Soul deck, so... Not like super common you see these. Again, it's, it, I actually mentioned this in my Sword Soul Tenny profile, that it's like, it's always Sword Soul Tenny, it's never any of the other Sword Soul variants, so... Um, I go for the Damage Chef Droplet, and at that point my opponent concedes, which again I thought was another early concede uh, from our opponents here during this round of games. I, I talk about this all the time because I do feel like this is a pretty common phenomenon where, like, I make a play that's, like, you know, pretty advantageous, yeah, but at the same time, it's 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 not a game-ending move. Like, I don't know, maybe my opponent just didn't have any follow-up, to be fair, but I still think it was a slightly early concede. But um, in any case, we've got one more game. Let's jump straight into it. This last duel is going to be pitting me playing my favorite current deck of Tri Brigade against my favorite deck of all time, which is Heroes. Ah, Heroes. Yeah, they, they are definitely, like, of any deck I've ever played uh, in Master Duel or the TCG, uh, Hero Beat back in, like, 2011. Would it be 11? 2011, 2012? The, like, Hero um, anti meta deck. Oh, so much fun. And then, of course, when Doc, Dark Law came out in, uh, what was that, 2014, I think? Uh, then I just played it all over again. Haven't played this more modern variant of Heroes because, you know, uh, pure in Master Duel, this deck costs a stupid number of Ultra Rares, and, like, still after all this time, I haven't pulled enough where I'm like, okay, I'm ready to commit, like, you know, I'll craft, like, six Ultra Rares in order to make it. No, I, I still need, like, at least a dozen, I think even more than that. Uh, in order to make this deck, which is sad, sad, sad but true. So, uh, let's see, they, they had a, what was it, um, they, they're really going off here, I forgot how much they went off this turn. Oh uh, yeah, they had a Stratos in the beginning, which I decided to Ash Blossom. It's like kind of debatable whether or not you Ash Blossom the Stratos, but I think you can make arguments either for or against it. I usually end up doing it, uh, because if my opponent's committed the normal summon, and I Ash Blossom the Stratos, there's like, it's not like the best chance in the world, but there are still odds um, that, you know, my opponent's just going to be done after that. So, uh, and this wasn't the case, though. My opponent's got a Fusion Destiny to follow up in the DPE. And like every other deck that does Fusion Destiny into DPE, my opponent's actually still able to make plays after this because, uh, you know, go figure, they're actually playing Dark Hero Monsters. They're going to summon a Plasma, and they actually opened the D-Force as well, and it's like... Oh shit, I don't think I've ever had this card actually dropped on me. I remember it from the anime, but um, no, I don't think I've ever actually in a game had this dropped on me. So basically what this means is that um, I can't target my opponent's monsters with card effects and um, my blah, blah, blah. oh my opponent's plasma can't be destroyed by card effects either. Uh, and it can also battle twice and gain some amount of attack points. 
Boom's not going to be able to draw either, but um, basically Plasma can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, and then my opponent's other cards can't be uh, targeted by card effects either. But fortunately, Forbidden Droplet does not target, so we're able to just negate the Plasma and the DPE both pretty cleanly there. Um, at this point, I'm going to summon the Chaos. My opponent's last card is actually Mask Exchange. That's so disgusting. That's so disgustingly good. Um, I just realized they opened the Mask Exchange and the D-Force for the Plasma, too. That's my opponent got a really good opening hand. Holy, wow. I'm like just now appreciating like just how good their hand was, but... We're still going to make an attempt to fight through this Dark Lot, although the Banish is going to make things really, really rough. And the fact that everything is going to be banished. Fortunately, we do have a revolt here. So we've got, like, some kind of option to fight back with. So here, yeah, they just... I think they just activated the DP's effect just to get the prompt out of the way. So they're not going to get it anymore. Um, and I'm going to end up battling over the, the plasma. I'm going to need to do that. Um, it does mean that my opponent is going to be able to draw cards again. Which, it would have been nice to keep them from drawing cards during the draw phase. But... Um, if Plasma is, you know, online during the next turn, then this Revolt does nothing, because the Shuri that comes back is, uh, gonna have its effects negated, so... I'll wait for the activation of the DBE here. I guess there wasn't really a point in doing that, because it's not like they were gonna... It's not like DBE targets, so... Uh, in any case, though, I'm definitely looking to get this Shuri online and banish this Dark Loss. That way it doesn't keep banishing my stuff in the turn. Although, unfortunately, I, I'm not actually able to do that. I'm not actually able to banish. And the reason that doesn't work out that way is because uh, DPE destroyed the Shurig um, before the Chainlink resolved. Basically, uh, after the Chainlink resolves, then, you know, Shurig's on summon effect is, uh, is, you know, triggered and it's checked. But if Shurig is no longer on the board at that time, then I'm not going to get that effect. So, um... And pretty, unfortunately, I was pretty much doomed as soon as this DPE. I really, I was doomed when I had to, to make the choice between getting rid of DPE and the uh, plasma there because I couldn't get rid of both. And um, yeah, the DPE was always just going to either because obviously I didn't chain revolt. The opponent was just going to destroy it anyway, so um, it was always going to be one or the other getting destroyed. But this one, at the very least, let me add back the fawn of Albaz. But uh, for anyone who's confused as to why the Shurig effect didn't trigger there. Uh, that's why. It's because it wasn't on board uh, by the time the chain link had resolved there. It's an unfortunate interaction, but there's not much that can be done. So, uh, at this point, I do still have, like, the slightest bit of chance. Uh, I'm going to try to summon this Albaz and use the effect and hope my opponent doesn't chain DPE. And they actually don't. I'm like, holy shit, they actually didn't chain DPE's effect. I have a chance here. That means I can get Mirror Jade and get rid of this Dark Lock. I can't actually use the Mirror Jade effect because I can't send a card to the graveyard while Dark Law is in play, but now having battled over it, now the effect is live again. So I actually do still have like a slight bit of a chance here. Uh, my opponent ends up ripping E Emergency Call on the top of their deck, which I think is probably the best like one card they could have top decked in this scenario, because uh, aside from Liquid Soldier itself, because now they get the Liquid Soldier. They get the Strato Search for the uh, Oddness and Gold. That's going to let them get Malicious Bane, which is 3,000 attack. Uh, can't be destroyed or targeted by card effects. But uh, that's, of course, on top of the uh, Extra Hero Cross Crusader here. Which gets back DPE. And I actually should have... Uh, that was actually a misplay on my part that I'm just realizing now. I should have set the toggle to on as soon as I realized this was coming out. To try to get this on the resolution. Well, no, it's when this card is Link Summoned. It's not an activated effect, so it would have gotten the effect either way. Hmm. So really, if I had been mindful that Cross Crusader was going to get dropped, because I was trying to save the Mirror Jade for the Malicious Bane, but if I had been mindful that Cross Crusader was going to get dropped, I really should have just... Uh, well, no, that's a non-normal summon effect. So yeah, I should have banished probably the Stratos. Then my opponent only would have had a Liquid Soldier. They still would have gotten the Stratos Search. So, they would have still gotten the, the Malicious Bane, which, um, hmm, yeah, I don't know. I think in that case they would have, well, they would have battled into the Mirror Jade. I'm actually trying to remember if Malicious Bane can be destroyed by battle. I don't recall off the top of my head. My opponent is going to summon Malicious Bane, so I'll find out in a moment here, but... I'm curious, let's see what that ends up, uh, what that ends up saying. 
But yes, the gold for the dark calling, and then you have the dark calling. Okay, and this monster, you know, it can't be destroyed by battle. Okay, so it still could have crashed. Okay, so it, it, it can be targeted, it just can't be destroyed by battle with current effects. Got it. So then, in that scenario, that hypothetical scenario I mentioned, the malicious bane would have crashed into the mirror jade. Basically, it would have ended on the literal exact same board state, so, okay. It wouldn't have made a difference. Well, it would have made a difference if my opponent wouldn't have DPE in addition to Malicious Bane. So it actually was a game... Oh, wow, that was actually a game ending that... I was wondering, okay, uh, so one of the reasons I wanted to go back and review this game is I was wondering if there was a chance that I could have actually um, saved myself. And I think the reason... Okay, but it would have, again, going back, it would have required me being cognizant of the fact that Extra Hero Cross Crusader is going to come out and bring back the DPE, which, you know, as much as I love heroes, I don't actually play the modern variant, so it's kind of hard, I guess, to keep in mind, like, every single one of the effects, especially when this is not, like, a... Like, it's not an uncommon matchup, but it's not a very, like, frequent matchup, so... Yeah, I guess that was a misplay that uh, ended up costing me the game, but... Um, I think in the long run, I don't. I think it would have required me either knowing heroes very well or having played them myself to have been uh, super aware to make that play there. But in any case, um, I definitely don't mind showing off games where I lose, but especially when it's against my my other favorite deck. So let's go ahead and move out to the or move on to the outro now. All right, everybody, thank you so very much for watching all the way to the very end like this. That does mean a lot to me, not only personally but as a means of supporting the channel. Uh, also appreciate those of you who are commenting and or subscribing. Uh, comments, as always, as ever, let me know what you think of the build. Uh, any suggestions Any suggestions you might have for it, um, and just in general. And, um, oh, if you're also interested in supporting the channel in another way, uh, feel free to check out linked in the description. Uh, you will find a link to my Patreon, where, in addition to YouTube, I am making uh, daily Master Duel content over there as well. Uh, so you'll get you know sneak peeks to videos, uh, exclusive games that are only on the Patreon, and other perks and content over there as well. Uh, feel free to check that out. Uh, it is much appreciated. Uh, but I think that's going to be all for today's video. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.